Hello everyone, this is section 6.3, Confidence Intervals for Population Proportions. So, recall the binomial experiment and the probability of success. Um, we use P, and the probability P represents a population proportion. And we have a point estimate, and it's denoted by P with a little... Um, hat on top. We call it, read it as P hat, P cap, um, but P hat typically. And that's our sample proportion. So we have uh, the population proportion is P and the sample proportion is P hat. And P hat is just X over N. X being the number of successes and N is the size of the sample as mentioned here. Um, and the proportion of failures, just like the binomial distribution, is Q, but we're going to use Q hat for the sample, and it's 1 minus P hat, because there's just two outcomes, success or failure. So let P be the population proportion for this survey of 1,003 adults, where 689 would be happy spending the rest of their lives with their or their career with their current employer, find the point estimate for P um, and Q. So P hat, once again, X over N. So consider the 639, the value of X, and the 103, 1003, excuse me. And that gives us point six eight seven to the nearest thousandth. And then Q hat would be 1 minus P hat, or 1 minus 0 0.687, so 0 0.313. Okay, now the formula for the estimating the population proportion P is similar to the formula for estimating the population mean mu. But notice that instead of mu, we have P nested between the left end point where instead of X bar or the sample mean, we have the sample proportion P hat. And similarly on the right, we have the sample proportion p hat, but still minus the margin of error and plus the margin of error um, on, for the left and right endpoints, respectively. And then we have a new formula for the margin of error. So these formulas are on your formula sheet. Take a quick look at them. But under chapter 6, You'll see down here, <clears throat> lays it out for us, uh, mentions that we should check in P and N, Q, that they're both greater than or equal to 5. But we can basically assume that, because I guarantee all the situations we're, we will encounter will work. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's the um, formula for the margin of error. And note that it contains Z sub C, so... When dealing with proportions, we're always using the Z distribution. So here's a couple notes. Here's the conditions of NP hat and NQ hat being greater than or equal to 5. And the sampling distribution is approximately normal. Uh, we're going to use the normal or Z distribution for finding the confidence interval. And typically we're going to round to three decimal places. But be careful, just read the directions in my math lab. So, this goes way back for you Buffalo Bills fan. I don't know if you remember Dick Geron, but he was uh, coach of the Buffalo Bills and he wasn't very successful. Um, so, 95% of the fans disapproved of his coaching and that's going to represent that's 
the number of fans in this sample, so that's p hat. So p hat is 95 percent, or 0 0.95, and there's a margin of error of 2 percent, or 0 0.02. So if we want to construct the confidence interval, it's p hat minus e is less than p which is less than p hat plus e. So we're basically given p hat is 0.95 minus e 0.02 is less than the population proportion p, which we're trying to estimate, which is less than the sample proportion of 0.95 plus that margin of error of 0.02. So 0.93 less than P is less than 0.97. Okay, now they want us to find the margin of error, so here we're going to use our formula that E is equal to C sub C times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. <clears throat> and we're given for this population proportion, p hat is 0 0.585. Maybe immediately you calculate q hat. You're going to need it. It's 1 minus p hat. So 1 minus 0.585 for q hat is 0 0.415. Okay, and then we're going to need, um, oh, it doesn't say the confidence interval. Okay, let's add that here. Let's say confidence interval C is uh, 0.80. Okay, so, so that was just neglected. And so let's use that, pretend that was part of the given, of course. So C is 0 0.80, and then we go to table 4. And in table 4, fortunately, <clears throat> if you recall working with the D Z distribution and finding the critical values, we look at the bottom of the page has common critical values, and fortunately 0 0.80 is there. It's 1.28, so we don't have to go through the process of finding C sub C, essentially a given. All right, so it looks like now we're ready to plug in. So E is Z sub C, 1.28. And then the square root of p hat, 0 0.585 times q hat, 0 0.415 all over the value of n, which from the given was 55.22. Okay, so here you want to make sure you get your keystrokes correct. You can do this any way you like. Doing it in one fell swoop. If you do 1.28 times and then get your square root going. So second function, typically the x squared key with the square roots on top of that. Um, that's why we hit the second function, of course. Then you have to open up a set of, per, um, it opens up a set of parentheses already for you. And you could just type in 0 0.585 and then times the 0 0.415. And here you could actually continue with just divided by 5522. Close up the parentheses. 
and press enter or equals. So let's double check and make sure that that's going to give us the right answer. Okay, so we've got 1.28 times second function square root, 0.585 times 0.415 divided by 55.22. And close it up if you like, and you get 0 0.008487, etc. And so. I'm just going to round this to, actually I'm going to keep a couple extra decimal places, I'll say point zero zero. I want three significant pick figures, so I'll go 489. Okay, but again, just watch the directions in my math lab. Alright, so next example, I want us to construct... 90% and then a 95%. So let's consider this a part A and a part B um, using the given st sample statistics. So for both situations, be it the 90 or 99, P hat is given to be 0 0.37 so q hat is 1 minus p hat or 1 minus 0 0.37 or 0 0.63 and the value of n is given to be 455 so I'll just reiterate that off to the right here with the givens and so now for the 90%. So then C is 0 0.90, because I always change it to a per, change your percent to a decimal. And then we can go to table 4. And once again, we're lucky at the bottom of the table. It gives it to us 1.645. So now the margin of error E, which again is Z sub C square root P hat Q hat over N. So substituting. 1.645 big square root p hat was the 0 0.37 I'm using the multiplication dot here you could use parentheses if you like times q hat 0.63 divided by the value of n was 455 so the margin of error e Check the computations here, make sure you can get it, 0 0.0372. So now for the 90% confidence interval, we have <clears throat> P hat minus E is less than the population proportion P, which we're trying to estimate, which is less than P hat plus E. So our left end point, the sample proportion, P hat 0.37 minus E, we found that to be the 0 0.0372 is less than the population proportion P, which is less than <coughs> P hat 0.37 again, and then plus that margin of error, 0 0.0372. So we get 0. 3328 is less than P is less than 0 0.4072. Alright, so now they want us to do the same thing, but for a 99% confidence interval. So then the value of C changes. It's 
99 and then table 4 again at the bottom again we're fortunate it's listed it's the use of C is equal to 2.575 Alright, so first the margin of error, E, is equal to, I'm not going to rewrite the formula, it's right there. But notice that the only thing that changes is the value of Z sub C, it's now larger, 2.575. And then the same square root of P hat, <clears throat> 0.37 times Q hat, 0.63 divided by n for 455. I'm going to bring it down here and again check my computations. E is 0 0.0583. Alright, so now for the confidence interval, I'll do it to the right here. I always like to write down the formula for that. And substituting p hat was again the same 0 0.37 but now the margin of error is different so subtract 0 0.0583 is less than the population proportion p which is less than 0 0.37 plus that same margin of error So now we get an interval from 0.3117 is less than P, which is less than 0 0.4283. And so note that the confidence interval was wider when we used a larger confidence level. So basically that will always happen. The larger the confidence, um, the level of confidence the wider the interval is going to be. Okay, now here's an example of this uh, CDC reporting about a flu. And you're always going to be given, or typically you're going to be given um, the number of successes out of a total number of outcomes. So you'll have to calculate p hat as opposed to that last example where it was kind of just mechanical where we were given p hat. But typically we're going to see a situation like this where we'll be given the value of x, the number of successes, in this case 4855, and the total number of outcomes n which is 12, 94, 943 in this case. So you'll have to calculate p hat. So we're just going to divide the 4855 by the 12, 943. And so p hat, once again, is x over n. You really don't need a formula for that. I mean, it's almost intuitive. just do that division to get p hat which in this case in a round of three decimal places 0.375 so then calculate q hat 1 minus p hat 1 minus the 0 0.375 <clears throat> so q hat 0.625 okay but now we're asked for the 94% confidence interval. And if you look at table 4 at the bottom, unfortunately, that is not given. So for a 94% confidence interval, we have the value of C would be 0 0.94. Remember, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but... If you want to draw the distribution, <clears throat> it 
what we're seeing is there's a negative Z sub C on the left and a Z sub C on the right. And we need the area on that tail that's to the left in order to be able to find the Z score. And remember what you could say is that, okay, there's between the negative Z sub C and Z sub C, there's 0.94 which means that between, and it's always easiest to work off the left critical value, there's going to be half of that between, or 0.47, between negative Z sub C and the mean of Z equaling 0. So then 0.5, which is to the left of the mean, minus 0.47, gives us 0. Um, Zero, 3 and we'll add two decimal places because that's our area but you might recall alternatively we did have a formula for the area in that tail it was one half of one minus c so one half of one minus 0.94 you get the 0.03 that way as well. And again, you want to add two zeros. Remember, this is where we look in the guts of the table. So I'll show you one more time because we haven't done this in a while. We're looking for 0 0.03. So perusing the table looks like the closest one is 0 0.031, which corresponds to a z-score of negative 1.88. Right? So z sub c. You could say plus or minus 1.88. It really doesn't matter, though, because <clears throat> with regards to our computations, we want to take its E as Z sub C square root P hat Q hat over N. Um, we want to take Z sub C to be the positive. The plus or minus concept... <clears throat> That comes out when we subtract E from the left endpoint to get the left endpoint, and when we add E to get the right endpoint. <clears throat> so then the 1.88 times P hat, 0.375, times Q hat, 0.625, all over the value of N was 12,943. So check the computations again. I'm just going to round this to three decimal places, get 0 0.008, and now for the confidence interval, again, P hat minus E is less than P is less than P hat plus E. So the sample proportion P hat was 0.375, minus the margin of error we just found, 0 0.008. So less than the population proportion P, which we're trying to estimate, which is less than the right end point, which is, again, the sample proportion P hat of 0.375 plus that margin of error of 0 0.008. And so we get 0 0.367 is less than P is less than... 0.383. Okay, so that's typically how they're going to be given. Unfortunately, we have to do this extra work to find Z sub C, uh, but hopefully table 4 is going to be at the bottom. We could use that the majority of the times. So. And now a final page. Now we've got, uh, we're going to do another Example similar to what we just did. It's listed as example six in the notes. That was just a typo. It's really example uh, seven. And actually, let's go over that one first before we um, go to our final concept. Um, 
So over here, we're given the value of x again. 4813 and the value of n is, oh, actually the 4813 is n. Excuse me. So that's the total. And the value of x we have to get from the table. So we're talking about having home internet access. Well, this must be pretty old because we're talking about dial up, right? Um, but n is the total. If you add these up, you'd see 4813 as their sum. Um, what are we looking for? They have high speed internet. So that's the value of X 2021. So now we can get P hat. X over N 2021 over <clears throat> the 4813. And to three decimal places, <clears throat> 0 0.420 is P hat. <clears throat> so Q hat, again, 1 minus P hat, 1 minus 0.42. Q hat is 0.58. Now, fortunately, <clears throat> it's a 99% confidence interval. So C is 99% or 0.99. And fortunately, on table 4, it is at the bottom. That is, the critical value Z sub C is given to be 2.575 for a 99% confidence interval. Okay, so at least we didn't have to do that this time. But we still have to go through our formula for E, which again is Z sub C, big square root, P hat, Q hat over N. Plug in the numbers. C sub C, the 2.575, big square root, P hat, <clears throat> was 0.42, times Q hat, 0.58, over the value of N, was the 4813. And so... Check my computations. I get 0.0. .0. I'm going to use three significant figures, so 183. So now for the confidence interval, p hat minus e is less than p is less than p hat plus e. So showing everything literally, p hat 0.42 is actually 0 0.420, so I just left out the 0, minus the 0 0.0183 is less than p, which is less than the 0.42 plus the 0.0183. Okay, so therefore, left end point 0 0.4017 is less than p is less than right end point point four three eight three. Okay, so final concept move up to the top of this page. We have the formula for the sample size for the population. So, recall that we did this back in uh, section 6.1. We found the minimum sample size, N, for the Z distribution. And for the proportion, here's our formula. And again, that's a given on your formula sheet. So, if you want to check that, <coughs> um, note that under... Sample 6, it was minimum size to estimate mu was the population mean. We used 
um, this formula would involve z sub c and sigma. But now if we want to find the minimum says sample size to estimate the prop population proportion p, it's um, basically just a manipulation, algebraic manipulation of this formula. So I won't bother showing that. Um, but there it is. And so, obviously the same as this formula here, except for the fact that there's a typo. And the typo here is that the z sub c over e as a quantity has to be squared. So what's in parentheses there has to be squared. So please make sure that you make that correction on this uh, these guided lecture notes. So that was a typo. Um, and this formula assumes that there are preliminary estimates for the sample proportion P um, and its complement Q. So P hat and Q hat respectively. But if no preliminary estimates are given, then we're just going to use 0.5 for P hat and Q hat. So we don't want to bias it in any way. So we'll just use 50% or 0.5. Okay, so here we're running a campaign. We want to be 95% confident. So C is 0.95. Um, let's go to table 4 right away. Fortunately, 95% is one of the common values. C sub C is 1.96. Um... So we want to be 95% confident that the voters will vote for our candidate. We want to be accurate within 3%. So that's our margin of error. 3% or 0.03. And we want to find the minimum sample size. So and this question mark. In Part A, we know that 32% of the people voted for our candidate. So therefore, P hat is known. It's 32% or 0 0.32. So then Q hat is 1 minus P hat. 1 minus the 0.32 was 0 0.68. So now we go to our formula that n is p hat q hat times as a quantity z sub c over e quantity squared. And we plug in p hat was 0.32 times q hat 0 0.68 and then times z sub c was 1.96 divided by the margin error e 0.03 but as a quantity squared so in terms of the keystrokes here you type in 0.32 times 0.68 but then after you get the multiplication you have to open up a set of parentheses and do this division of 1.96 divided by 0 0.03 close the parentheses but then hit the x squared key to square that quantity and then press enter Okay, so I'm going to double check and make sure those keystrokes are correct. So, got 0.32, 0 
times 0.68 times open a parenthesis 1.96 divided by 0.03 close the parentheses then I'm going to hit the x squared key to square that what's in parentheses and then it's going to do all that multiplication and uh, we get 928 0.81 but remember always round up no matter what even if there were 928.06, you'd round up and use n equal 929 in this case. Okay, but then we see the final part. No preliminary estimate is available. So if that's the case, as we noted before we started this problem, we're going to use 0.5 for p hat and 0.5 for q hat. So p hat is going to be 0.5 and q hat is 0.5 as well. Same formula p hat, q hat, c sub c over e is a quantity squared. So it's pretty much the same thing, but we're now using 0.5 for p hat and 0.5 for q hat. So please, 1.96 still, margin of error still 0.03. Make sure you square that. Check by computations. Get 1067.11. And then round up, as we said. And in this case, we use n equaling 1068. Okay, so that's the end of 6.3 and the material for exam 2. Uh, so we'll see you when you're ready for chapter 7.